FlyQEFB from Seattle Avionics. Let's talk about ADSB. We're going to talk about ADSB in two parts. The first part is a quick overview of ADSB basics. If you're already very familiar with ADSB basics, you can probably skip about the first half of the presentation. The second half is specifically how FlyQEFB uses ADSB. So let's talk about the basics. ADSB is a system that broadcasts information to the FA and in some cases receives information from them. By January 1, 2020, ADSB transmission, which is called ADSB out, is required in most places in the country where you have population areas, essentially the same as a mode C veil areas today. ADSB in, which is where you receive data like weather and traffic, that is not required as part of the FA's January 1, 2020 mandate. There are two frequencies for ADSB. One is 1090 megahertz. It's an international standard and it's designed for planes flying in the flight levels. It is traffic only. 978 megahertz is a frequency that the FAA created specifically for general aviation flying below 18,000 feet. It has traffic as well, but it also includes a sweetener. It includes weather information. The weather information that you get from ADSB is, well, probably the best way that you can put it is you get what you need. You get medium resolution next drive radar. You get METARs and TAFs, you get winds aloft, you get aeromets and SIGMETs, PIREPs. You also get things that aren't strictly weather, such as TFRs and SUAs. Traffic. Traffic is what ADSB is really designed for. The whole point of ADSB is to allow aircraft to land closer together, to fly more tightly in airspace by knowing more precisely where each and every plane in the system is. Ironically, though, the traffic information that you receive is only reliable when your plane also has ADSB out. That is to say, if you have a certified system and you're, and you're broadcasting your own position to the FAA ground station, then it broadcasts back to you all the traffic that may be a factor for you. If your plane does not have ADSB out, then there's some major, major limitations on ADSB traffic that you'll receive. Sometimes you'll see all traffic, sometimes some traffic, sometimes no traffic. The big problem is you really can't tell which one you're receiving. Now, it turns out that many of these limitations may change in early 2016 when the FAA is considering broadcasting all traffic all the time. I sincerely hope they do that. Hardware. There are tons and tons of ADSB systems on the market. There are systems from Stratus and Clarity and Dual and Garmin and iLevel. There are systems that are certified from FreeFlight, from Navworks. There's Sky Radar systems, lots of different ADSB systems, more than you can count. How does ADSB generally work? Well, let's take two scenarios. In the first one, you're the plane, the red Cessna inside the blue bubble. In that case, you are very close to an ADSB tower, and you're going to be receiving weather and traffic information on 978 megahertz. In the second scenario, though, you're too far away from a ground station to receive anything from that ground station. But you happen to have what's called a dual channel receiver, so you receive traffic information from 1090. You're too far away to get anything from the 978 frequency, but you will get traffic, in some cases, that's being rebroadcast by commercial airliners and corporate jets flying overhead. So, again, in that case, you won't receive any weather information. Traffic is the most confusing part about ADSB, though. If you have ADSB out equipment, life is good. Assume that you're the Citation jet in the middle of that blue hockey puck. The hockey puck has a radius of 15 nautical miles, which is to say a 30 nautical mile diameter. And vertically, it shows traffic that is within 3,500 feet plus or minus of you. So in this particular case, the ADSB ground station down below is going to be broadcasting the, tar the targets that are in that area near you. So you would see the two red Cessnas near you. On the other hand, if you're the Cessna down below that is circled in green, and you don't have ADSB out, you won't receive any traffic meant for you but by eavesdropping, you will receive the traffic that is meant for the citation. So you will see the two red Cessnas that are within the blue bubble, and you will also see the, the citation jet. Now that's all well and good. The problem is that if there's traffic closer to you, for example, these, those targets are too far away from the citation for the ground station to tell the citation about them. Unfortunately, they happen to be very close to you. So that's the danger of not having ADSB out in your plane. You may see some traffic, but you are not by any means guaranteed to know that the traffic that you see is a traffic that is relevant to you.
let's talk about how ADSB is used in FlyQ EFB. FlyQ EFB has the largest selection of different ADSB systems that you can use than any other app that we know of in the App Store. We support all of these receivers except for one. We support the Stratus, we support the Clarity, we support the Dual, we do not support the Garmin. If Garmin would allow us to, we would, but we can't, so we don't. We support systems from iLevel, from SkyRadar, certified systems from FreeFlight, and Navworks, and so on. So if you're coming at us from another application, almost certainly whatever ADSB receiver you have today is automatically supported by FlyQ EFB. Let's talk about weather. One thing to understand about weather is that this is not considered critical information from the FA. So if there's a problem with an ADSB weather transmission, the FA will certainly fix it, but they're not going to jump on it immediately. It's not the same priority as traffic. It also means that the update frequency to all of the weather products that I'm about to talk about are pretty much the best case scenario. Very often, in fact, from my personal experience most of the time, the updates are quite a bit less frequent than what you see here. ADSB Nextrad isn't bad, but it's not nearly as good as the Nextrad that you can get from the internet. There are two types of Nextrad from an ADSB receiver. Within about 200 miles of you, they have something called local radar. It's probably what you would call medium resolution. It gets updated, again, best case scenario here, every two and a half minutes. There's also a national, which is often called a CONUS radar, which is considerably lower resolution, and it's updated, again, best case, 15 minutes. I put the word maybe here because in my experience, most of the time, or at least much of the time, you simply don't pick up the CONUS at all. It depends on some other factors too, like which kind of ADSB ground stations you're near, and so on. METARs and TAFs are updated in a way that makes a lot of sense. The ones that are near you get updated in the stream first and more frequently. The ones that are further away may get updated, may not get updated, but they'll get updated slower. Best case scenario, METARs get updated every five minutes, TAFs every 10 minutes, and keep in mind that when I say update, I mean rebroadcast most of the time. A METAR is still, generally speaking, only updated once an hour. TAFs are updated four times a day. That means that the same data gets rebroadcast many times during the period. Winds aloft is similar. The winds aloft is only updated a few times a day as well, so it's not live data. It keeps rebroadcasting the same information over and over again. Pyreps, airmets, and segments are transmitted in the ADSB stream, but as of this video recording, they are not supported by FlyQ EFB. Let's talk a lot about the next ride. Right now, you see what a next ride image looks like when coming from the internet. It has a lot of contrast. It has sharply defined lines. It's, well, pretty. On the other hand, this is an ADSB radar echo from an actual flight using an ADSB receiver. I'm sorry that the area isn't the same, so it's not exactly comparing apples to apples. The zoom level is about the same. So you can clearly see that the ADSB next ride image is a lot blockier, a lot grainier than what you get from the internet. Not only that, let's zoom this out. When you zoom out, or even when you're zoomed in, you often get this kind of striping effect where there are clearly bands of information that are missing. That's because of the way ADSB is transmitted. It kind of fills in gaps as it goes along. So given enough time, those gaps usually fill in, but you don't necessarily see a complete picture every two and a half minutes. I also want to bring your attention to the status indicator. We'll talk more about this in a few minutes, but there's a status indicator in the upper right corner of the screen. In this case, there are four indicators Three of them are green and one is clear. The third one over that says ADSB, third one from the left, is telling us that we are now connected to an ADSB system. So our weather is coming from ADSB. If we take a look on the left hand side from the weather that came from the internet, you'll notice that the ADSB light is clear. We're not connected to an ADSB receiver. So you can always tell where your weather is coming from like that. Traffic is hugely important with ADSB. Understanding the limitations and understanding what it means is very important, so we put a lot of emphasis on this. Let me give you a couple of examples. In the middle of the screen, we use color coding to tell us that two of those targets, the ones that say negative 04 and negative 02, are dangerous to us. One is red, one is orange. These are targets that are color coded to, to tell us that they are potentially a threat to us and we need to pay attention to them. On the other hand, these targets and several others on the screen are kind of black with gray. Um, they're frankly a little bit hard to read and that's intentional. We want them to blend into the background. We don't want you to pay a lot of attention to them because they are no factor in our flight. We define the factor in a flight in a couple of different ways. It has to do with how far away it is from you in terms of lateral and vertical spacing. So 
Let's take a look at what some of those numbers mean. If we take a look at the one that says plus 25 in the red highlight box, 25 means there's 2,500 feet above us. We know it's above us because of the plus in front of it. If that had been a minus, then that would mean that it is below us. The other thing to look at here is that there's a line coming out from each target aircraft. In the case of the one that's plus 25, there's a line that's relatively short coming out from it. While on the other hand, on the target below it, that is plus 163, that has a very long line from it. Each of those lines represents where the aircraft is predicted to be at its current speed in two minutes. So clearly the one at plus 25 isn't moving very fast, while the one that's 16,300 feet above us is, not surprisingly, moving quite a bit faster. Let's take a look at the one in the middle again. If we take a look at that red thread, and you can see now why it's a threat to us, it's going to be almost crossing our flight path line and its altitude is negative 04, meaning it is 400 feet below us. More interestingly, however, is that there's an arrow next to it. So negative 04 is 400 feet below us, but the arrow to the right of it is going up, meaning that that plane is climbing. So it's definitely going to be a threat to us. We also put an automatic 15 nautical mile ring around the system. That 15 nautical mile ring is a great way to know roughly how far away targets are from you. One final thing that we'll talk about in greater detail in a moment is that on top of the ring, there's an indicator, which is actually a switch that you can turn on and off. We're turning on and off a traffic filter. Right now, we're seeing all the traffic, so the filter is off. If we turn the filter on, you see something quite a bit different. Let's take a look. This is the same image as we had before. The traffic filter is off, so we're seeing all the traffic, even the traffic that isn't really a factor to us. When we turn the traffic filter on, though, now suddenly we only see two targets left. Those two targets are within 3,500 feet of us and within 15 nautical miles of us. In other words, they're relevant. It uses the same way of categorizing relevancy that the FAA uses when they decide what targets to broadcast up to an ADSB out equipped plane. Status indicators. In the upper right corner of the screen, right here, there are four indicators. We talked about them briefly before. Let's take a look a little more closely at these. Again, so the GPS green means that we have a good solid GPS signal that's been updated recently. The weather is yellow though, in this case, meaning that we are receiving weather, but it's getting a little dated. We have an ADSB receiver connected and working properly. And when we take a look at the fourth indicator, it's showing us that we have an, a battery powered ADSB system that looks like it's about 80, 90% battery. All that's at a glance. If you want to see more, however, on this, you can simply tap on any of those four indicators, it doesn't matter which, and you see something that looks like this. You have a pop-up window that can show you details about your GPS, about your weather, and your ADSB. We'll skip the GPS for now. But the weather is pretty interesting because the weather tells us for each weather product, Nextrad, Satellite, Netars, and TAFs, Winds Aloft, Airmats, and Sigmets, not only when they were last updated, but were they updated from the internet or were they updated from an ADSB system? Keep in mind that satellite is never broadcast through ADSB, so the satellite will always be from the internet. And airmets and segments are being broadcast by ADSB, but again, as I said earlier, as of right now, FlyQEFB only takes the airmets and segments from the internet. The last indicator is about ADSB, and that's probably the most interesting for this topic. This tells you when was the last update individually for weather, for traffic, and for GPS. In this case, they've all been updated very recently. It tells you the number of ADSB ground stations you're receiving. And then there's a graphic. I'll scroll down a little bit and show you that. On this graphic, we see where the ADSB ground stations are, the distance and the relative position compared to our aircraft position. Very handy to know whether you may or may not lose an ADSB system soon. Scroll that down a little bit more and you see even more detail. It tells you what the closest station is, what the farthest ground station is, it tells you which type of ADSB receiver you're using, and depending on that receiver, it may give you additional information like software version number, serial number, and so on. Quite a lot of detailed information, and to get to all that, you simply tap any of the four status indicators at the upper right corner of the screen. Fly QEFB from Seattle Avionics.